Evening everybody. Can somebody um, possibly give me a thumbs up to let me know that the sound's okay? Superb. Thank you very much, Chris. It's my biggest worry on these things is that the sound doesn't work. I hope everybody's well tonight and uh, looking forward to a nice bank holiday. Anybody got any uh, any fishing plans in for the weekend? Thanks, Adam. And Devin, nice to uh, nice to see you tonight. It's Lady Bower. I've never fished Lady Bower, Chris. I'd be really interested to see uh, see your report on that. Uh, our local members, Water, enough said, Adam. I might be able to angle an afternoon on the on the river this weekend. Um, depends how much rain we get. To be fair. We give people a, a bit of a, a moment to uh, to log in. I'm sure we'll get lots of people that will drop in and out tonight that we normally do. So, Chris, Lady Bower, um, will that be off from the bank or a boat? I don't know much about Lady Bower, so... Uh, okay, so we got Devon's back on the test. Um, it's a nice stretch that on the test, Devon. Um, I don't live too far away from there. And I used to live in a, a little village called Overton, which is right on the river. Ah, oh, Chris, boat. Okay, cool. Ah, oh. it's good fun in the boat. The sunken village ri rings a bell, actually. Why do I know the sunken village? Probably read about it. <laughs> Hi, Phil. Right, as long as long as long as your wonderful wife doesn't blame me for uh, for very expensive packages appearing. But that that Petty Jean tool is a is a touch of class, mate. You'll enjoy playing with that. It's so versatile. Hi, Robert. So for for those of you that just dropped in, we're just uh, just chewing the fat about where anybody uh, <laughs> where anybody's fishing this weekend. Um, she says she does. Okay. <laughs> In that case, then, uh, Mr. Sprout, I shall uh, blame you when um, new kit arrives for the bass season and the grayling se and the um, uh, and the mullet season. Well, I hope everybody's got a drink to hand. Um, I'm going to try and maximise tying again tonight, um, and uh, I sort of I haven't dedicated one of these sessions to um, to buzzers. I've sort of tied buzzers, but I thought tonight um, I just concentrate on the good old Shironomid, um and look at it in terms of uh, look at it in terms of of all its glory, to be honest, and its versatility as a fly uh, to fish, um, and buzzer fishing is always 
you know, lots of people say to me, they say, I've never fished buzzers. I, I don't know how to fish buzzers. Um, how does it work? I, you know, I've never had any success with them. And, um, and it is, a, it is a bit of a dark art. Um, it's, but it's one of those types of fishing that can be highly addictive and comes in all sorts of different styles. Okay. Um, so, um, so yeah, so we're going to tie up some, um, different buzzers. This is a, an example here, um, of one of the buzzers we're going to tie tonight. Um, and this is, this in smaller sizes does a lot of damage. Um, uh, when I'm, when I'm at me and springs, Rob, actually on the, um, on the catch and release, um, and I'm targeting sight fishing for, um, browns that are sitting very low in the water and you drop it in and you just lift it and, and they spot it and they move to it and you can see them and, and you almost have to, have to strike when you think it's in their mouth. And, uh, and sometimes it's not got there, but other times it's, it's deep in and embedded in and and they really do uh they really do hit it okay um so um you know ultimately um what we've got here is uh is a buzzer that that you know takes on lots of characteristics of lots of different buzzers that have been tied before them and it, it is nothing really new here i've just put my own little slant on it um as i've been tying as we all do um, it's got this uh, the, the red bloodwormy type um, coloration um, through the body and the segmentation. Um, it's got uh, um, uh, wing buds that are here that are multicolored. Um, in fact, they are red, amber, and green. So, if anything, that that, that traffic lighting effect, um, you know, as the blood is disgorged into into developing wings. And here we've got across the top, um, I've put in some UV resin. Um, but it mimics um, sort of trapped oxygen bubbles that get trapped on the top um, as the as the shonamids are rising. So um, it looks complicated. It's not. Let's get tying it. Okay, this is on a size twelve. So it's a twice size twelve, um, fulling mill. Uh, my old favourite, um, the Czech nymph um, uh, hook, the fifty sixty five. We're going to tie these on a twelve just because my eyes are a bit. Uh, a bit um a bit tired tonight from a, a week of teaching and uh and so on so here we go right so you don't need a lot of equipment for this either and a lot of materials and you can substitute in anything that you've got that you think might work plus colors i'm just going to go with a straight black um uh, thread it's a utc um thread um i want it be, want it to be utc because it it sits really flat on the uh, on the hook because um, I, I like my buzzers very slim. I don't know why, so as I always have done, I do like them to be very slim. So I'm going to start up here at the eye and I'm going to not leave any space. And I'm just going to work my way down until I get in line with the hook point. Now you'll notice I'm using a, a curved hook here. Um, I do like a buzzer on a curved hook because they do wiggle, they do change shape, but you can tie it on a straight hook. No problem at all. Uh, tie with whatever sort of wet hook that you might have available. Um, now for the rib, I'm going to use some uh, some red flexi floss. Uh, this is Veniard's flexi floss. Um, when I see it, it's often in the sale. I mean, various colours. I tend to buy quite a lot of it because I use it in lots of different patterns because of its versatility. Um, so I'm going to tie this in, um, and I'm just going to bring it under my tying thread. And bring it round so it sits underneath the hook and I put another lock in like so so that I've got it tied in there now I'm gonna pull the flexi floss really quite tightly because I don't want it to build up too much bulk underneath my tying thread so I'm just gonna work my way down and use the flexi floss like I would the tag end of the tying thread to just butt up the turns so that they sit next to each other but while keeping it quite tight doesn't matter if you uh if you miss a little bit it's all going to get covered over anyway but the aesthetics of the whole thing just makes it feel and look better and gives you confidence when you're tying and, and fishing so i'm going to bring it down so 
um, you know, you can go down as far as you like, but um, I tend to go down about halfway round the bend. Um, and then I'm just going to spin my bobbin and just flatten out that thread. Oh, I've gone out of focus there and flatten out the thread. Let me just see if I can get that back in. I knew that it was going to do that. It's liking my jumper a bit more than me, than the fly. Oh, it's turned round. Please bear with me. Technology. You know, I've been sitting here for about half an hour just fiddling with it and it's all look it's all been really well um, focused and now it's suddenly not so I'll tell you what I'm gonna do let me just because I think it's my jumper that's causing the problem so I'm just gonna get rid of the jumper and have a just a white surface just behind that's better right say so yeah we can see it now superb um, I'll throw that jumper out. Uh, it's not going to be my tight jumper anymore. So, um, so here we go. So I brought it down. I'm going to bring my tie-in thread all the way back up again, as close to touching turns as I can, keeping it as flat as I can as I move up. There we go. I'm going to bring it up to where I tied it in in the first place, and. Take another turn. Now, the great thing about flexi floss is if you pull it tight and cut it, it pings back underneath your wraps so it hides and doesn't leave any bulk. But also, I can just leave it so I can just see it. Now, I'm going to use the flexi floss to form my rib. You can build up the body more if you wanted to. I like mine quite, um, quite slim. Um, so, what I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap the flexi floss as a rib, leaving segments, um, but in the opposite direction to the way in which I tie my thread in. And I'm going to pull it really tight down this bottom end so it sits quite flat and it, and it thins out. So it's thin at the bottom. And as I'm moving it up, trying to keep equal spaces initially, quite close together. As I move up, I'm going to just release some tension and make the gap slightly wider. And it thickens out and forms quite a nice profile. I'm going to bring it up, put a turn, and then I'm going to tie off. There we go. A few couple of turns and then I'm going to bring the tying thread further up towards the eye before I pull the flexi floss tight and give it a snip okay and then I'm just going to tidy up with this front end and make sure everything's hidden got quite a flat flat thread I don't want to leave any unsightly bulges there so now what we've got is we've got this nice segmented body um, what I do tend to do with this is I tend to give it a coat of um, Sally Hansen's varnish just to toughen it up so that it can last multiple fish because otherwise the flexi floss with those sharp teeth of those fish um, can get frayed and it will eventually um, um, just break um, and uh, and you won't be able to use that that particular fly anymore. It keeps going out of focus. Right now, for the wing buds, um, uh, for the wing buds, I'm going to use some crystal flash. Again, another material that I buy in bulk. Because I use it for lots of things. You'll see, you've seen this in the tails of my damsels. It's got this iridescence um, in the light. You can see it's got this nice little bit of bling. Um, it also takes colour really well, which we're going to talk about in a moment. Um, and for this bit, I want five, four or five strands. I'm going to go 
I'm going to go with four strands on this bit because I don't want to overload it. So I've got four strands and I'm going to bring it underneath, lifting up my tie-in thread so it sits on the top. But this time I'm going to bring it right under so it sits under. And then I'm just going to lock it in place so it's sat underneath, um, underneath my hook um, shank. And then these two end bits, I'm literally going to pull tight and bring them down. Now on, on my vise, I'm going to bring them down at about 45 degrees to the, to the point at which they're tied in. Um, and drop it right down like that. Now what I'm then going to do is I'm going to come all the way back with my tying thread. Like so, and just tie this in so it forms part of the thorax area and gives me a bit of bulk, but also positions my wing buds exactly where I want them so that they come at, up at an angle. I found that if I just tied them in on either side and just brought them across. They cover over way too much of the of the of the top of it, and it just doesn't look right. Um, now the thorax area, that's just a case of building up a thread base. Um, you could swap that out. You could swap out the thread and put a different colour in. You could um, you could dub it if you wanted to. Um, you could put whatever you liked in there. But I'm just gonna go back and forth a few times, so I build up sort of a taper. There we go. Now. Because I had four pieces of crystal flash, it means I've got four either side. So I've got to make sure I've got the four either side. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to lift them up and I'm going to bring them forward to, to the eye of the hook. And I'm going to put a turn in to lock it and then a second turn just to, just to position it. And you can see that the the wing buds now are sitting um, just below the top of the, uh, the the buzzer thorax, and if you look at them under a microscope, you'll see that that's the that's primarily the position um, of them. So we're trying to mimic the uh, the the actual structure of a, a chironomid as much as we can. Now I haven't finished there because what I like to do, and this is completely optional, um, what I like to do now is um, I like to take a, uh, well, he says, I like to take a needle, there it is, I like to take a needle, and what I like to do is I like to just push it between the thorax and the crystal flash, either from the bottom or from the top, um, helps if I just move it like this, I'm going to do it from the bottom on this, make sure I've got my four pieces, and I'm just going to push my needle up under just very gently and then just run it underneath so that it just flares them out a bit. I don't want it to flare out too much, but I want to give it, um, I want to give it a little bit of uh, more of a dimensional look um, as if the wing buds are developing, they're engorging with blood and they're going to be getting ready to move further in the metamorphosis of the uh, of the creature and the good thing about doing this is that you can keep playing with it until you've got it how you'd like it and if one side is slightly bulkier than the other don't worry about it because in nature nothing is totally symmetrical there we go I'm happy with that and you can see that those wing buds are just started to flare okay so we're giving it trigger points here um, so I'm just gonna put in a, another lock into in there and then I'm going to come in and I'm just going to at 45 degrees there's a lot of 45 degrees in my tying I'm just going to trim off the front section and now I'm just going to tidy up this front piece and put a little little head in um, you could put a hot spot head in now 
could change it for a red thread if you wished completely up to you um, anything is possible and I tie this up in loads of different colors um, uh, um, uh, coral it works quite well um, so does um, so does olive um, and then I but I also tie them up using the flexi floss as the wing buds so it does depend you can start start really changing up the patterns and just making little minor tweaks because sometimes it's those minor tweaks that make the difference and then I'm gonna just take that off now you could leave it at that simple little simple little buzzer but what I like to do now is the artistic side of me comes in and I like to use um, uh, um, pro markers now these are um, watercolor type pro markers so they do bleed um, but what I found is that they're really good for just putting little dots of colour on the thorax covers and the wing buds of buzzers. So I'm just putting some, some ruby red down at the bottom end. I don't know if you can, you can just make that out. Just there, you can see that there's a bit of red. Um, and then... I'm going to swap to um, a brilliant orange and I'm just going to bleed the two together on either side. Doesn't matter if you miss some. And of course, this is totally optional, it's just the artistic side of me. Um, I like to have a play, I like to have something different that nobody else has got in their box. And then, right at the eye, the, the head. Um, I'm going to finish off with some green. As a little nod to uh, to sort of those traffic light type ideas. Okay, so you can see the colours in the wing buds on there. Now, I then finish in two ways. I can then take some Sally Hansen, hard as nails, making sure that it hasn't thickened too much. A normal normal um, thinners won't work with Sally Hansen because it's a toluene based um, and these are toluene based um, thinner um, and I'm just going to put on a very light coat of Sally Hansen and because the because the um, nail varnish is a solvent um, it will start to blend and bleed and the um, the watercolors in there, but what we're doing here is just making it a little bit more bulletproof than it otherwise would be. Now you let that dry. You can put on two or three more coats, make it really, really, really um, bulletproof. That will help it as well to drop through um, the water surface because this isn't a a near surface buzzer this is one that i would fish quite deep and raise up and then sink again raise up let it sink again hoping that a uh, cruising fish will take it on the drop um, i'm then going to come in with a little bit of uh, uv varnish uv resin i haven't used this for a while um, and i'm literally i'm going to turn my buzzer upside down you can't see that at the moment and then just underneath I'm just going to fill the gap underneath the wing buds with a little bit of resin. And then I'm going to come back up and I'm going to just put a little blob to form a thorax just across the top. Like so. Okay. And UV light comes in. Give it a blast. Doesn't take too long, a couple of seconds. There we go. And we're all good. So what we've got now is a pretty indestructible buzzer. You could have these on as a team. Um, you could tie them up in different sizes. I go down to size 18s. Uh, this is a size 12. Um, but, um, you know, it, it's, a, it's a very, very, very... Um, effective buzzer one that um, I fish with quite regularly um, particularly if I'm targeting um, particularly 
particularly if I'm targeting um, the Browns. Um, so let's have a look. Um, so I think I've answered that, Adam. I go down to an 18 on these. Um, this is a size 12, so this is a particularly big one. But um, the Sharonomids and buzzers, you know, the, the, the fish are cruising and eating them most of the day. So when you see cruising fish, if you're lucky enough to be able to visually um, see your quarry, they're going to be moving around. You see that little flare of the gill plates, um, mouth opening as they're swimming. They're, they're they're sort of like acting, I suppose, a bit like um, a bit like whales do. So they they just they're just hoovering up chironomids that are in the water column, and there's always chironomids in the water column, unless the temperature drop, drops too low, um, and they're going to be feeding on these and taking most of their diet from these. And their their digestive systems are so well adapted and evolved to absorb um, uh, nutrients from such small creatures. But if uh, if a blue whale can do it, why can't a trout do it? That's what I say. Um, so, yeah, really good, really nice um, uh, buzzer um, to tie up. You don't have to go through the whole resin thing. You could just leave it. You could use goose biots for the um, for the for the uh, for the wing buds. You can use um, antron. You could use whatever you like. Okay. Yeah. So um, so ultimately. Um, you know, we're we're just looking for for key things that are going to going to get these fish um, fish moving. Um, just reading here, uh, Malcolm, aren't fish color blind? There's a lot of studies to to say that, that at the moment we're not 100 percent sure, um, and uh, whether or not they see in in a different spectrum of light to normal. Um, who knows? So we're, it's one of those um, uh, questions. I don't think we're ever going to answer. Um, as to what really triggers um, triggers these guys. Um, okay, so we're going to go for our second buzzer tonight. I told you I was going to maximise out as much as I can, um, and our second buzzer is going to is going to look like this. More of a more of a buggy type buzzer. Now the previous buzzer had fish generally in all areas of the water column, but it tends to sink very quickly down to the bottom. So they'll take it as a bloodworm, bring it up through the water column, you know, just sink and draw, let it sink, draw, let it sink again, draw, let it sink again. You know, it, it's a very slow style of fishing that can be really productive. Whereas this one, um, this one is, is sort of near surface. It doesn't sit in the surface or close to the surface. It sinks down, but it's got a foam thorax cover that just keeps it up and gives it buoyancy. Um, and uh, and I've caught some uh, some really wary fish on this um, uh, in the last couple of seasons when I, when nothing else has worked and they've been cruising through the upper layers of the water and they've been ignoring everything else and even the dries and you throw this in and 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 they just they just basically open a mouth and you just see it and you just feel it tighten or if you're lucky enough you see them actually physically take it and you can strike into them. Um, Really easy to tie. Again, not many uh, different types of materials. Um, so I'm going to use the same hook. Again, you could use a straight hook. Um, okay, so I'm just going to go through the same techniques really initially. I'm not even going to change the uh, the thread. Um, you know, if I was being a traditionalist now, I'd go to a brownish coloured thread because of the brownish body. Um, I'm just going to stick to the black because uh, I can't. I don't want to waste time. So I'm going to start up right up to the eye, and I'm going to bring my tying thread. This time, I'm going to bring it all the way round, using the tag end to keep all of the sections, all of the the turns together. And bring it down to my usual point and just take that bit off. There we go. Now, for the body on this, or for these for the rib, um, I'm going to use um, stripped peacock quill. You don't have to, you could use whatever. Guess what? I was almost very tempted um, to use my peccary again because I haven't mentioned it yet. I've still got it out there. I could use this as well. Um, you could use all sorts of stuff. Um, but I'm going to use some hand stripped peacock quill I can often be found in the uh, in the winter when I'm watching TV in the evening 
I'm using a rubber um, and, a, and, a, and a craft mat and I'm stripping my own um, from the eye of a, uh, of a peacock. Um, it's far cheaper to do that than it is to keep buying small packs of 20 that don't actually aren't really long enough to do the job that you want. Um, so you can see we've got the dark side and the light side. Um, I'm going to tie this. I'm going to tie this in with the dark side facing down, and I'm just going to trap it in, like so. Get it onto the bare hook, and then tighten up, and bring my tying thread in, touching turns, flattened out as much as I can. Hence the UTC thread, and I'm going to bring it all the way back up the shank and the curve of the shank so that it's in line with the hook point. doesn't matter if you go further at all, you can always come back. Um, now, um, strip peacock quill, uh, hurl, sorry, can, um, can get very brittle. So often I'll have softened it up in a little teacup or egg cup of, um, of warm water. Um, it just keeps it soft and supple. Uh, because otherwise it has a tendency when you first make this first turn it will split um, I haven't done that with this tonight because I forgot um, but I'm going to go through the same process um, and I'm going to I'm going to use it as a rib and I'm going to come up the body the black underbody with my peacock uh, strip peacock and I'm just going to get it underneath my tie-in thread and I'm going to leave, I'm not going to do them touching turns. I'm, I'm going to leave the black in between to form almost the rib on the body to give me that segmentation. And that's why you could use, you could use a sort of a rusty red under here as well. Um, you don't have to use black. You could change the colours up um, completely. And we're going to bring it right up. I'm taking my time because and you notice I'm using my finger just to hold it down here. And I'm doing that because it does have a tendency to spring back. You can use your hackle pliers. Um, I just find it easier just to concentrate on using my fingers. Um, I'm pretty dexterous, so um, it works quite well for me. But hackle pliers will work. And I'm just going to bring it up. I brought it right up. And you can see that we've got this beautiful segmentation. And then I'm just going to take it to there. And I'm just going to tie that down. There you go. Now you could trim it off there. But I'm going to use some of this to form some of the thorax area. To give me some bulk. To reduce the amount of dubbing that I need to put in. I'm going to take it to there. I'm going to come in. With my scissors at 45 degrees, a little trim, and then tidy up, and then come all the way back just to tidy everything up. Make sure I think that I've got enough um, enough there of space for for actually the thorax and the thorax cover. Um, I could do actually with bringing it back a little bit so that's why it doesn't matter if you go too far because you can just go back over that like so and then I'm going to bring my thread back up to the middle of the thorax like so okay so we can see some um, some really nice um, um, uh, segmentation with the peacock running through here um, you can buy you can get it in different colors um but if you don't want to spend lots of money on different colors and you're stripping your own just grab a pack of um, pastel color sharpies um uh, permanent markers and they make perfectly good coloration and you can get some nice olives running through there some nice nice yellows um you know for your for your yellow owls and all sorts of things now at this point you could put a cdc plume on and have a sort of a, a an emerging buzzer and for this, we want it to, to sit subsurface. So I'm going to take um, a piece of cheap white craft foam. Um, uh, it's just cheap stuff that I pick up in Hobbycraft because it does the job. Um, 
what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to cut a very fine length of it, no more, no wider than maybe two to three millimeters, um, because I want the the I want the um, I suppose the the depth of it. So that would be that would be the foam depth. I want the foam depth to be my uh, my thorax cover width. Okay, so we're not going to tie it on like that. We're going to tie, we're going to turn it sideways and place it there. So what I'm going to do then is I'm just going to make a little arrow shaped cut at the end. It doesn't have to be perfect. And then I'm going to place it just on top so that it forms the under part of the thorax. And just look at it, check it, look at it again, make sure I'm happy with where it is. And then I'm going to use a pinch turn. And like I've done before, I'm not going to tighten up until I've come up. And then I'm just going to pull down. That stops it from, in my, in my book, that stops it from spinning around. Okay, so it won't end up on the underside of your hook. So I've got that there. Three, three uh, turns. And then I'm going to go forward. And I'm just going to trap down the foam. As part of the underbody it doesn't have to be totally covered because you're going to cover it with some dubbing and then i'm going to pull the foam a little bit tighter and i can bring it back to the point at which um i want the thorax to start and then i'm just gonna just because just because i am going to tidy it up because no matter what it you know it doesn't matter what it looks like underneath there's a i always go back to the old guys who taught me to fly tie and they would have been aghast if i'd left it um, without tidying it up as much as I possibly could. Um, so there we have it. And this eventually is going to sit across the top like this. And this gives it its flotation, its buoyancy. Now, thorax, you can use whatever you like. Absolutely whatever you like. Um, last week it was, or the other week, it was pine squirrel I was using. This time um, I'm going to go for the good old-fashioned fox squirrel. Um, this box set of natural fur, um, if you can pick one up, um, I, I just love it. It's got all sorts of stuff. It's got uh, muskrat. Um, it's got camel, uh, coyote, mink, grey squirrel. And you'd be thinking, well, when am I ever going to use that? But you'd be surprised when I when I challenge myself and I'm looking at patterns and it says, oh, you need to uh, need to have the 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 beaver fur from the left testicle of a male. And I'm thinking, where am I going to get that? And lo and behold, there it is. Here it is. OK, so um, I'm going to use fox squirrel here and I love fox squirrel more than I love pine squirrel because it is really really buggy it's got loads of guard hairs in it um it, it's not the easiest thing to dub with because you lose a lot so feel free to use some uh use some some wax on the thread um but I'm going to use the natural moisture of my fingers just to loosely put a little dubbing noodle on Yes, you could use a split thread technique. You could use a dubbing loop if you wanted to. Um, and I'm just going to build up. I'm not going to go too far forward each time. I'm just going to build up my thorax. You can already start to see this leggy sort of pre-emerging sort of look that we're after. And I'm just going to build that up. I'm not going to go right to the eye. Because I've got to leave space. In my mind, I've got to be thinking, I've got to leave space to bring the thorax cover over and tie it down. That's going to take a good couple of millimetres. So I'm going to bring it forward. And <coughs> then I'm just going to swipe back. See how far I can still go. What's my margin of error? I've got a little bit there. And then I'm going to go back over with any spare that I've got. And just as a measure of oh i've got a bit of a bit of tough stuff in there let's get rid of that um i'm just gonna build up a bit more you can have it really quite um bulky under here and obviously on the on the smaller versions and again i go down to an 18 on these obviously you use a little bit less of the material um so i'm gonna come in 
bring it in. There we go. Just bring it everything backwards. It's there. Can tidy it up later. And we got this really nice buggy looking looking creature. I'm just gonna push the fox squirrel down. Maybe wet my finger. Push the fox squirrel down. And then I'm gonna bring my foam thorax cover across. And I'm gonna pull it quite tight because I want it to push everything down so it flares out. And then I'm just gonna pinch it and hold it in place. And then I'm gonna use, there you go. Yeah, again, I'm gonna use that pinch turn, but pull it tight when we get it at the top. And you can start to see we've got our thorax cover there. And you could do them in different colors. So I did have ready um, some browns and some beiges. You could do, you could put a cider on it. So because one of the good things about this is in clear water, particularly down here in the south, you drop it in even at distance. And if you've got that cider like this, um, you can spot it, and you can spot it for a, for for the, as it as it's floating in that mid section of the water. And if you've got a good idea about where it is, and you see a fish suddenly change direction, the likelihood is that fish has gone for it. You can put in the speculative lift chances are you're going to be into a fish so you could leave a little section at the front like that if you wanted to a little tuft like um like breathers um i tend not to with this so what i tend to do is bring it back and then just at 45 degrees again just trim the sharper the scissors the better and then i'm going to use my flattened thread I'm going to start at the at the eye section and come back and just form my head and make sure that I've got a nice neat head section. And yeah, and you're going to get a couple of fibers that are going to stick forward. Um, we can trim those out. You can see it's already starting automatically to to spread out here um, and flatten. That's why I, I do like UTC thread. It can be annoying sometimes, but I do like tying with it. Um, and then I'm going to use a one, two, three, whip finish, tighten it up. Don't know what I've done with my scalpel this week, so I'm just going to use my my renowned scissors, give it a little little push, and we've got this buggy looking piece of wonderfulness that is going to be trout candy every day of the week um what you could do and i didn't do it tonight just to save time but i'd often tie up lots of the bodies tie it off and then varnish lots of bodies and then finish off and do the thorax and the thorax cover um a little bit later on um particularly if i'm tying a number of these um what you can then do is come in with your dubbing brush and just give it a little Little tease, nothing too onerous. You don't want to, you don't want to damage the thorax cover. The fish will do that for us. Give it a little tease, and just give it a pull just to see if there's any loose material. What I like to do is I do like to come in and then just with my scissors, just point it at the hook point and the eye, and just trim. So it's just above the hook point. So there's nothing. So they look more like straggly legs. And it leaves the hook point unencumbered then. Um, and um, in previous tying sessions, I've neglected to put um, any varnish on my dries because of the, you know, this weird idea in my head that I've got about adding extra, extra grains of ounces. Um, so I'm going to use some Celia clear varnish on a needle. And I'm just going to come in and just put a drop of varnish just on the head. And it soaks really well into the tying thread. It's one of the one of the benefits that it has over Sally Hansen. Um, because Sally Hansen just sits on the surface. Whereas I find that the cilia really does um, uh, sink deep into it. And then using my needle point, I'm just going to make sure that there's nothing in the eye, particularly when you when you're getting down to the small guys and you get on the water and 
my eyes are getting my eyesight's getting worse and worse and I've now got the needle stuck in it um, my eyesight's getting worse and worse um, there's not a lot I can do about it you could if you wanted it to sink much quicker and go much deeper you could then put some UV varnish across the top it's up to you um, you could put instead of um, the uh, the foam you could use some uh, um, uh, uni mylar in different colors particularly uh, one of my favorites um, is uh, the uni mylar um, peacock orange so it's orange on one side and, and sort of like a, an iridescent peacock color on the other side and that's really good it's great for doing wing buds as well um, so um, so another fly so we've now gone from quite deep in the water column to to quite high in the water column but not totally at the surface um, just in terms of, of size comparisons so that's the 12 um, that's the 18 okay so it's significantly significantly smaller um, uh, and for wily little brown trout um, on still waters, um, it's quite deadly. Okay, so let's have a quick look and see see what's being being said. Uh, okay, uh, thank you, Malcolm, for your kind words, um, and Phil. Um, do you believe good more fish are caught on very dark coloured flies? Do you know what, Malcolm? The more I fish on the river, um, and the more I um, target um, fish, the more I'm discovering that um, they do like a dull drab fly, very much so. But the one... One thing that makes me think that there's something else in it that they like a bit of bling as well is that the number of fish on the river and on the still waters that I've caught on quite gaudy copper coloured copper johns is unbelievable. Um, but yeah, I do. I do believe that and, that, you know, that drab natural colours work really well with the triggers because, you know, you know who's to know? What is going to ultimately cause a fish to take something like this? Is it just because it's in the right place at the right time? Um, but those times where you, you put a fly in and you see a fish visibly turn because they've spotted something. Is that a silhouette? Is that a colour? Is that a flash? It's hard to say. Um, sometimes it's all three, I think. Um, I really wish that, uh, that we had a way of, of asking the fish exactly what was going on. But hey, never mind. So um, two flies down. We got time for a third, a little bit more complicated for the third one. Third one is a is a fly that um, I've tied um, for uh, the odd customer here or there. Um, this time it's um, it's aiming to sit in the surface um, and be almost an emerging buzzer, um, but it's got two phases to it, um, and you need to bear with me on this one. So. Um, I'm going to basically tie two flies on one hook, if that makes sense. It'll make sense in a moment. OK, so um, I'm going to start off this this particular fly, not up at the eye, um, this particular buzzer. I'm going to start it round about where the hook point is. And I'm going to just bring my tie in thread down the shank slightly. Not too far, and I've just got it there. Just tighten that up, and there we have it. And uh, and at this point, you can do you can, again. You can do whatever you like with it. Um, I've put something down. There it is. I've got this. Um, I'm going to put a rib on, and I've got this uh, this very fine Lurex um, here. Now I bought this thirty years ago at Cardiff Market um, from the Haberdashers store. Um, in, in Cardiff Market, and I've got the gold as well. Um, this is the silver, and it's withstood the test of time. Um, and uh, there's so much on here. I don't think I'll ever need um, ever need to buy any any more, which is why I've never tried to source any. But it's a very fine, flat silver tinsel um, used by uh, milliners and haberdashers um, in clothes making. Um, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to use this to form a rib. 
and I'm going to bring it under like so. Same techniques. Remember, technique trumps pattern in my book. You'll always have the technique so you can tie all sorts of different patterns. Now I'm going to bring this all the way down again to my stopping point so that it's in line with the hook point and then bring my tie-in thread all the way back. Now I'm not too worried about it being flat. But I'm going to bring it all the way back and then I'm just going to form my rib. I'm sort of rushing through this one to maximise time because you know you know how You've seen how we, we tie the ribs in. It's exactly the same. And I'm going to bring it up. Like so. There we go. And I'm going to use my finger here. And I'm going to widen out the segmentation. You don't have to use. You could use the um, uh, stripped quill again. You could... To be honest, you could just use uh, a lighter coloured thread and leave the tag end and use the tag end as your uh, and colour it with a pen and use that as a rib. Um, so I'm going to bring it right up to this point here. There we go. There we have it. Take that bit off. Now... I'm just going to form a thorax by here, so you can see I've start. I've got the buzzer, but I've still got a lot of space at the top by here. Now I'm going to put that in. This time, this time I'm going to use the flexi floss. So I'm going to reuse some of the materials I've used before, um, and I'm going to form a couple of wing buds. So. Tie it in like we did on the first one. Bring it all the way back. Bring it forward. Bring my wing buds forward. And tie it down. And keep it quite tight. Like so. So I've got my buzzer on this bottom half or all this back two thirds of the hook. I want this one to be sat in the water so that it's in the surface film. And ultimately I want it to be sat in the surface film like that with the buzzer section and the vast majority of it under the water. So I need, I'm now gonna put in some material to make it buoyant at the top. So I'm gonna leave it at that. Um, and I am, uh, where's my, there it is. I'm just going to give that a whip finish. Like so. Now I am actually going to trim this off. Like that. Because I'm now going to reattach my tie-in thread just at the front. Like so. So I've left a little bit of the shank bare by here. Um, so um, next phase, going to get a bit of flow date, flotation, a bit of CDC. Okay, so uh, let me just find the bit that I want. Ooh. Oh, don't want that bit. Uh, it's gone somewhere. What have I done with that? Oh, it's right in front of me. Silly idiot. Right, I've got my CDC. So it's a light done. Um, and I want three or four plumes that are roughly the same length. Um, more plumes you got, the more flotation you're going to get. Um, don't be afraid to use quite a few. And this will really will float like a cork. So I'm going to match those up at the tips. Using the curve of the feather to position. That one's not curved in the right direction. 
just going to bring it in. There we go. And at this point, I'm going to tie it onto the top so it forms the flota floating shuttlecock that we're familiar with. So there we go. So we've got that in there. And I'm just going to tie that down quite firmly. And I'm just going to check the length of that. It's maybe a little bit long for my liking. So I'm just going to tease it back. About to the length of the, the hook itself. And then tidy this up. I'm going to come in from the back 45 degrees. And then I'm going to tie down that front section and form almost a thorax area here at the front. And then I'm going to come in at the front and just cock it up with some turns at the front and there we have it i'm not particularly liking the shape that i've got there so i'm just gonna there we go and i'm just gonna one two three turns there i'm just gonna look at that and so we've got a fly that's going to sit in the surface and it is literally that the top section there is going to be in the surface film or just on top and that's going to be sitting just below it so it's no it's 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 sort of really enticing um and um it really does catch fish um and then what I tend to do then is I tend to add a few extra little things, um, a bit of a bit of Robert's um, uh, Robert's sparkle added in. I'm going to go for some um, hot ambulance uh, fluoro golf resin, um, fluoro pink, only because I haven't got any red, and um, I need to find my needle. Where's my needle gone? It's around here somewhere. I need my needle. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little hot spot but this time I'm going to put it at the bottom so I'm just going to take some of this resin I'll often use a pallet for this so I'll use a piece of cardboard um, and just get some out on it and then mix it up but for this I'm, I'm not going to use much tonight so it's not coming out oh there we go so it's this bright pink resin. I just want a little blob of it. I don't want a massive amount. It's quite thick. This should have sat it in in uh, in some warm water. Um, and literally, I'm going to take that blob. There's maybe a little bit much there, and just at the base here. I'm going to put a little blob of pink. You could use orange, you could use red. A little blob of pink. And then just move my vice around. You don't need a massive amount. A little bit goes a long way. And the great thing about the resin is that it won't, well, unless you're tying outside, as I discovered last summer, um, it, <laughs> it doesn't harden that quickly. Um, so, yeah, so that was a bit of a drawback. So that's on. So then I'm going to give that a quick blast. A little hot spot. There we go. So I've got my hot spot there. And then you could resin the rest of it with clear resin. Um, but
But what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in and use my Sally Hansen and just give it a little fine coat to protect that ribbing from the teeth. You don't have to add in all these extra little things. I just like to do it. Um, just gives me pleasure, I suppose. There we go. And we've now got I'll just hold that up and put that up. I'm going to you can see how that's designed just to sit just subsurface. You can put on a, more layers of Sally Hansen to harden it up um, and it just sits in the surface um, and the CDC helps it float like a cork. And, uh, and again, you know, if you're, if, you, if, you're, if you're chasing fish that are rising, but they're just sort of, I suppose, smutting, they're just, they're just dimpling the surface, maybe um, just taking um, canis or, uh, or very small buzzers, something like this just sat in the surface. Um, they'll come and investigate and how how do they investigate well they grab it with their mouths and then they decide don't they um, and uh, and again it's got some trigger points on it um, and you know it's got a bit of flash um, you could do them make them extremely drab you could leave everything off you know a plain black buzzer is a highly effective um, fish catching machine um, so you know so three three flies for me tonight um, in record time. Um, so we've got three buzzers that are going to be sat at different points in the water column. So we had our um, almost my my variation of a traffic light flexi floss buzzer that is going to be sitting quite low. Okay, not as deep as a, as a brassy or something like that. You've then got um, the um, my um, peacock and fox squirrel um, uh, um, suspender buzzer that's going to be sitting um, subsurface maybe two to three feet down um, tends not to, to go much further than that because of the buoyancy pushing back up on it uh, the water pushing back up um, and it sits there and you can just move it up with a little pull and then we've got our um, our sort of my take on sort of like the owl type um, idea um, but just with the the actual buzzer body that will be sat well below the water, um, the water surface, and it will just sit there and uh, and you can just watch that, watch the tuft, almost almost like dry fly fishing, but with a buzzer. Okay. Um, right, so I hope you've enjoyed those. Um, it's been a bit different tying, tying buzzers, i got to say. I do like tying buzzers and I do like fishing with them. Um, it, it's... It's as addictive, I find, um, when you get it, get good conditions, it can be as addictive as dry fly fishing. Um, um, and uh, it can be really, really good fun. So um, let's have a look and see what uh, what everyone's been saying. Uh, let's have a look. Uh, yeah, Neil, there's lots of good stuff on YouTube showing how to strip peacock hurl and things like that. Um, uh, uh, and stuff so that's great um yeah phil you've got it yeah exactly mate um you could use that uh, natural fur box for all sorts of things you can imagine um, the coyote and camel for crab patterns as well uh for for bonefish and, and permit um uh uh <laughs> you're all too kind um uh that's okay adam just try things try try tying um and uh and and just have some fun um and ultimately don't just stick to my pattern change stuff up um i spend way too long just going i wonder what that looks like in a buzzer or how would that go and sometimes it sometimes it comes off and it looks really good other times it, it's awful and i throw them away um but you know who who knows what's going to work on any given day um yeah, Neil, on the washing line, the, the, the foam topped one, um, because it's going to lift up as well, is going to keep it 
um, up in the water column. So yeah, on a team, absolutely fantastic. Um, so um, hope you all enjoyed that. I'm sort of done for tonight. Um, more next week. Um, next week, um, I'm going to open it up and um, I'm going to um, ask for um, you guys to to tell me what you would like me to tie um, within reason, please. Um, and um, and we'll see if we can get a, uh, a viewer's selection going and see what happens as long as I've got materials and things like that. So I'll put something up on the uh, on the Facebook page. Um, put your suggestions in. Um, and uh, we'll see what happens. Um, so enjoy, have a good bank holiday. Um, if you're out on the water, stay safe, but enjoy it. Um, and here's to a really good summer of fishing, guys. Um, take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.